This is episode 19 with mindset therapist, Megan Elise. You may know the destination, but do you know the path to take you there? This is Profits to Wealth. We shorten the time it takes for entrepreneurs to find true success through guided conversations alongside industry elites. We'll cover your commonly asked questions and dive into the skills, tactics, and lessons learned from business professionals who've turned the industry on its head through experience, critical thinking, as well as practical money management. It's time to talk business, money, and freedom with your host, Jack Marino Jr. George Bernard Shaw said, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Welcome to Profits to Wealth. This is your host, Jack Marino Jr. Today on the show, I'll be interviewing rapid transformational therapist, Megan Elise. Megan Elise is a rapid transformational therapist with a deep understanding of the subconscious mind and its integral role in creating the life we desire. She is on a mission to educate and teach people how powerful their subconscious minds are and how we can program our minds to shape the future we desire. It's her purpose to teach, to guide, and to help others on their journey to their ultimate destiny, whatever they decide that to be. Megan, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you on the show during this uh, turbulent, unprecedented time. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to uh, give your listeners some juicy tips and insights to help them through this time. Well, I'm ready for it. Uh, turbulent time or not, I think um, mindset, having the right mindset is extremely important in everything that we do. So this is going to be helpful for hopefully uh, all the listeners, but also myself. So very excited. So let's get started. You're a rapid transformational therapist. What exactly does that mean? And how do you help your clients? Yeah, so what that means is you can pretty much coin it as rapid transformational training or coaching for your mind. So what makes me different from other therapists or coaches focusing on just the conscious mind, which is like that talk therapy, but we have two minds. We have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So I work with people with their subconscious mind and why this is integral and critical is science now shows that we run off of our subconscious mind 90 to 95% of our day. So you do the math. That's huge. If you want to make any change, you have to be working with the mind that rules our life, that rules our day. Because our conscious mind is our thinking mind, which is our thoughts, our desires, rational thinking, and logical processes. But our subconscious mind is our emotional mind. Those are long-term memories and all of our beliefs and programs. So what's a belief in a program? Well, a program is something you've learned, like a skill you've learned, such as learning how to walk. That's a program. You're not consciously thinking one foot in front of the other. Your subconscious just knows how you do it so you can walk down the road without thinking that way. So we aren't consciously always thinking about our programs and our beliefs. We're running off of them. So yoga is a skill that you could have learned that you don't even have to think about when you get on the mat. You're good at it. You're in wealth management. Whenever you do with the computers or what is second nature to you, that to me, I don't have that subconscious program. So that would be difficult for me. And just as such as your beliefs, such as I am enough, I am talented, I am lovable, because your beliefs, they lead your actions. If you have a belief thinking that you're not good enough, you better believe you're going to act in a way that relates to how you believe. And you can have a conscious desire and thought, but if it's not matched up to your subconscious programs and beliefs that you have, your subconscious is the ruler. It will take over. So you might want financial wealth and freedom, of course, who doesn't and success. But if you have a subconscious program or belief running in the back of your mind, that is equated pain to success and wealth, your subconscious moves you away from that away from the success because your mind's number one job is to keep you alive and to move you away from pain. So when I work with clients, we figure out what has your subconscious mind created? What belief and what program? Well, you might say, I would never associate pain with success or wealth. Well, that's not true because before the age of seven, you're just a subconscious mind. The rational and logical processes of your brain are not yet developed. So your subconscious mind is just on record, taking in everything that you see from your parents 
parents, to the teachers, to whoever's caring for you, whoever you're around with. So if you saw one of your parents working really hard when you were younger and they were miserable, your subconscious mind records that pain associated to success. And to make sure that you don't ever feel that pain again, it will carry into your life. So I might be working with a client that this happened to, for an example, and now they're procrastinating. They're getting anxiety attacks. They have self-sabotage and they can't figure out, I consciously want this wealth, this freedom, this business, but I'm sabotaging myself. I'm, I just can't get the motivation to do it. What is happening? It is your subconscious mind. So we figure out in the session, when I work with a client, what is going on? What program, what belief did your subconscious start to figure out? So this is why we use hypnosis, because hypnosis is the gateway to your subconscious mind. Your critical factor starts to shut down in the conscious mind so that the openness to your long-term memories start to flood in, where you might not have remembered that your dad, when you were four years old, told you, no, you can't have that when you asked for something and that pain and that embarrassment and that shame of asking for what you wanted has carried you into your adulthood. And now you're not going to ask for what you want. It's a hard time for you to get what you want because you have this pain associated to that. So once we get into the long-term memories and I talk to your subconscious mind, I ask what is going on, the client responds and they come up with these memories that they forgot even how happen. So then once we have the root, the reason of what's gone on, and this works more than just for wealth and for success, if there's anxiety, if there's depression, you weren't born that way. No babies are born with these limiting beliefs or these mental health issues. So we figure out where it all stemmed from. You need to figure out the root and we figure it out we rip that root out. And then guess what? Your mind is so suggestible and programmable when you are in that relaxed hypnotic state. So then I feed that subconscious mind with suggestions, with empowering beliefs and statements that you actually want to feel, that you actually want to do because your beliefs lead your actions. So when I put in those good beliefs that you are enough, that you are worthy to have that success, that overflowing abundance in your bank account, your savings account, that you can have the confidence to ask for what you want. You act a different way. You start behaving a different way. And then you get to create the life you've always desired. And now you've lined up your conscious desires with your subconscious beliefs and programs. Awesome. Well, so if I sort of recap, this is so true because what you've said is essentially we're a bunch of automatons. We're on autopilot which the brain is very powerful in that there's a lot of things that we can do and we don't have to think about them once the neural pattern has been sort of uh, made inside the mind. And that's great so that you can actually do things like drive and comb your hair and really not have to think about how do you do it? But to your detriment to what you're saying is beliefs shape your behavior. So somewhere on the, along the line, if we're running on our subconscious and we've got a bad program in there to say, hey, you know what, I'm not enough or hey, I can only make $60,000 a year or whatever the number is. You may not on the conscious level think, hey, that's silly. But on the subconscious level, your program, if we're kind of speaking computer language, is got a little bug and the bug says, hey, I, you can't make over a certain amount of money. And then that belief, that internal belief shapes then your behavior and then you're kind of living out what your subconscious has programmed. Did I do a good job with the summary? You did a great job with the summary. You can exactly look at your, your mind as that computer. And if you don't update the software, just like you update your phone software, your computer software, you're running on these old programs, these old beliefs that you didn't even make consciously you made them when you were younger or you took on beliefs of your parents. And that's a really great point. If you saw only your parents make $60,000 a year, your mind only knows and sees that threshold. So to get beyond that, you have to start to wire your mindset to go above and to go beyond, but your subconscious mind, not your conscious mind, that it's only of those desires and of the thinking and you want to have it. So it, like you said, it's in the background playing as a program. So you're not even thinking about it. Your actions are just going through life with that success and overabundant mindset where it's just, that's your regular life. Right. So someone like yourself through rapid transformation therapy, 
I know you have a lot of different tools in your belt, basically can take that program or the bug in the program and extract it, like you said, and put in a new program. And now the release that person from their captivity, their limited belief, right? And release them to the next level in life. And obviously at the next level, there's always going to be some sort of glass ceiling, something that you have to, it's a constant process, right? Because it's not like you can do this once and then go to infinity. You're going to go to the next level and hit a glass ceiling and you're going to have to remove some other type of limiting belief. Would you agree with that? Yes, 100%. The self-growth, the self-development is a lifelong journey. And that's the the thing that when I work with clients is I set you up so we have one max three sessions together. And once you've started to go through this process guided, just like if you're going to learn any new skill, you can do it on your own, but it's going to take you years so much longer to master on your own, but you have that mentor, that guided teacher to show you the way you start to be able to note when you have these limiting beliefs throughout your day, after you've gone through the process with me. And after I've taught you these tips and tools, you're like, okay, here's one right now. Here's this glass ceiling. What do I need to work through? Is this really true? Like, it's almost like you start to coach yourself after being coached by me enough. Yeah, so I can see how this could be very beneficial because we're a creature of habit. And as you've already stated that, you know, 90% of what we do is at the subconscious level. So, you know, you think about everything that you do from the time you put your feet on the floor when you get out of bed to the time you drive to work. I mean, there's so many things you don't even realize that you do and you're not even thinking about you're doing it. And so that's how I believe that most of us are living our lives. And there's so many opportunities to root out these limiting beliefs and move yourself to the next level. And the reason why, I mean, I think this is extremely valuable information and what you're doing is extremely valuable. But as we record this, we're in a very unprecedented time in history. We're experiencing change and challenges as the COVID-19, as they call it, the coronavirus spreads around the world. And specifically, we're in the U.S., And I want to know, would love to know how you can help listeners maintain a success mindset during turbulent times. Because right now, if you listen to the news, just drive around, I mean, most people are sort of homebound at this point. It can drive fear and panic, which are very powerful emotions and make you do irrational things. So how can you help all of us during this uh, interesting time? Yes, absolutely. So it's, it comes down to your focus. You can watch the news all day, all night. You can feed into all the conversations and talk about how this is the worst thing that's happening. That's your focus or take charge and take control of where you're putting your focus to obviously stay aware of what you the protocols and what you need to do but leave it at that and then shift your focus on what do i want what do i want to feel when you start to ask yourself questions you get answers so ask yourself good questions it's a it's a job of your subconscious mind to answer the questions. You might not get an answer right away, but you will get an answer. So how do I want to feel? Well, I want to feel joyful and I want to feel successful and I want to feel accomplished. Okay. So if you know that's how you want to feel, you have to direct your focus to feeling that way. So anything that comes into your day, that's going to shift you off of your focus, stay in your lane. No, that is not my focus. And you are the only one in charge of what you take in through your ears and through your eyes. So you have to direct it exactly where you want it to be and the tools or the things that are going to take you and keep you in that state. So it's almost like being in peak state. What peak state do you want to be in? Energetic, enthusiastic, passionate, accomplished, like I said before. You know what you want. You have to decide this is how I'm going to feel. Okay, so now you know how you want to feel. How are you going to get yourself there? There's three very easy general things that you can do. There's so many different ones, but an easy one to do is meditation. If you've been feeling this fear, switch on a gratitude meditation. There's so many that you can find for free. There's these free apps. There's free ones on YouTube. I have one I can send you. 
and one that is centered on a different emotion, such as gratitude. And gratitude is such a buzzword, but it really isn't if you feel the emotions of gratitude. So a gratitude visualization will bring you into your heart. It's a heart-based emotion. And when your heart and your brain are aligned, you're back into coherence. So you actually can start to make sound decisions and bring yourself out of that fear and anxious state because you can't feel fear and gratitude at the same time. So you're focusing your mental energy and your thought processes on gratitude. And if you've never done meditation before, I used to think it was silly and that it was stupid and that it was a waste of time until anxiety just like overruled my life. And when you actually give it time, even a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and you start to feel your internal state, your body calm down, your mind, your thoughts get more clear and laser focused versus like a tumble dryer always like going constantly or a hamster wheel, you will dedicate time to this. But you have to decide that your thought processes, the way you feel is worth it over than consuming and fueling the fire of fear, fuel the fire of what you want to feel instead. I see. So number one is meditation and visualization. So where your focus goes, your energy flows, as uh, Tony Robbins likes to say. And I, this is sort of the same thing of what you're saying. So during meditation, which, yeah, it's sort of a buzzword now, and you can think of it from a spiritual standpoint, or you can think of it as a, from a standpoint of, hey, no one really has time, takes time to themselves and really get, get quiet and really Focusing your mind on, like you said, what you want, visualization, visualize what you want, how you want to feel. Uh, most people are living reactionary to how they feel. So you're saying set out some time for yourself. What, what do you recommend in the morning, in the evening, afternoon, how long? Yeah, absolutely. So in the morning and right before you go to bed, you're in that groggy state. And that groggy state is a theta brainwave state. So you're not quite conscious yet with your conscious mind taking over. So that is a perfect opportune time to throw on a guided meditation or do your own meditation or visualization. Why? Because your subconscious mind is still very active. So everything that you're taking in, all those suggestions at that time is going into your subconscious. So this is far more powerful to do right in the morning, right at night. That being said, if you're feeling a di like a low vibration of stress or anxiety and overwhelm, awesome time as well to throw in a quick five minute meditation to shift your state because you can shift your focus. You can shift your state with a snap of the fingers and a meditation is a great way to do that. Okay. Would you mind sharing maybe one or two, three resources for the guided meditation? Yeah. So there is the calm app. Okay. That is free insight timer app also has free meditations and I think headspace as well as I have a bunch of resources. So I don't know if you do show notes, you can put those in there. I'm happy to send them out as well. I like to do quick five minute ones, especially when people are just starting with it. It's easy to throw it on and not worry about, oh, am I like missing out on doing other type of work, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're like, I don't have time for myself. Yes, yes. Uh, please, number one, please do share those with me and I'll put them in the show notes. But you're, you're spot on. I think when I first started doing this, it was the first thing entered, entered into my mind is, do I have time? Because yeah. it's always like the tick of the, the clock is always really loud in the morning because you feel like, well, I got I to gotta get going. I got to do something. This is a waste of time. But I have, I, I mean, sure, you know all the studies, but I've actually read the studies and have seen the independent studies that have been done of the benefits of doing meditation, even if it's for a short period of time every day, even five days a week, it helps with anxiety, depression, holding your thoughts longer. So anyone that has ADD, ADHD type of disorders, uh, they've seen improvements by just doing a little bit of meditation. Plus what you're saying is, is you're, you're priming your mind on what you want instead of being reactionary and just take whatever comes and living by your, your feelings, your emotions. Exactly. And if you can set aside five minutes to be 
50 minutes more productive and efficient, you've already made back that time that you didn't think that was going to be useful. That's very true. So in your three-step process, we've covered one, meditation and visualization as one. What's number two? Number two is movement. Movement is so huge and so important because emotion, especially the negative or the lower vibration emotions of fear, of anger, frustration, of annoyance, energy, that's emotion. So how do you move emotion? Think of emotion, energy and motion. So you got to move, you got to find some motion. So even if you stand up and throw on a song, if you're feeling frustrated when you're working away, a three minute song to jump up and dance and to move that emotion around your body or do a quick stretch if you have time, like a 10 minute yoga movement, any type of movement that you're, you're moving, your arms, your, your whole body is involved, a quick run, something like it doesn't have to be like an hour long. People think like, I don't have time because it's like an hour, an hour. No, five minutes will do you so good than just sitting in your chair and tightening your little hip flexors. Like it's good for your physical body. It's good for your mental body and emotional state. I can attest to this. I would um, quick experiment for those listeners, uh, assuming that you're not driving. All you have to do is turn on a little music, jump up and down and dance for probably 15, 30 seconds. And I guarantee it'll change your mood. You know, I think my business partner, when I talked to him about this, when I came back from a conference, he thought it was a joke. And I had one of my associates come in my office on a Monday morning and he was sort of in this uh, somber state and I had him do it. And he's like, wow, instantly it changed his, his state to now alert and happy and like ready to get started. So movement, whether you call it movement or exercise or whatever, it's just get in motion. And I love that. It doesn't take long to change your state. And obviously it's good for you to get your blood going, to circulate. And I don't know how many have witnessed this or experienced this, but how many good ideas have come when you just went outside to go on a walk? So I think movement to your point can help you in a lot of different ways. So just get get out and move. So how often or how, you know, how much time do you have like intervals throughout the day where you try to do a little walk or get up, do some push-ups? Like, what do you recommend for most people that are, let's say in a desk job or maybe we're all at home? Um, yeah, kind of especially locked up. if you're at home or at a desk. The studies are showing once you're sitting longer than half an hour, your internal organs actually start to shut down because you're cutting off that that base from the lower half to the top half of your body. So I have a timer set on my phone. Every half an hour, I get up, regardless if that's just to stand for a minute and to stretch side to side, or if that's to get up and go grab some water, like staying hydrated is very important as well. Just half an hour, every half an hour, you have to get up and you have to just do something. And you feel like you said so much better. And then I always make sure that I get yoga in in my day and something more higher intensity, because my heart, I want to keep it happy and healthy. And again, it doesn't have to be an hour, I like to chunk the times up. But if you want the most effective, it's right in the morning, right when you wake up is the most effective for exercise if you are exercising. So just one and two, this is a three-step process, just one and two, again, as we sort of experience the spread of COVID-19, most doctors would say those one and two alone, I don't know, you know, depends on your doctor, but Dr. Joe Dispenza, there's a lot of people in the science and, and medical field that have said meditation and movement exercise do a whole lot for your immune system. So it's, it's not just about manifesting what you want. It's actually about your, your health. And the more stressed out you are, the more cortisol that builds in your system and puts you in that fight or flight mode, which actually makes you more susceptible to virus infections, illness, correct? Correct. Especially if you are a business owner, an entrepreneur, if you're stressed and you're not enjoying what you're doing and you wake up in panic and you, you're anxious all day, what you're doing to your physical body, you might not see it, but you better believe you are having a huge effect on it. it adrenaline and cortisol racing through your veins, it's keeping yourself in that chronic heightened state of, oh my God, something's going to go wrong because your body doesn't know the difference between, you've probably heard this before, but being chased by a tiger 
or if you're just stressed out because you can't answer an email on time or it's not going through. This is putting your brain and your heart out of coherence as well. So you're, there's a hundred things going on that is detrimental to your health immune system just being one of them. Those two alone are awesome. And as soon as we get off of the podcast, I'm going to jump up and down because I'm, I need to do it. I've just been sitting too long. Thank you for the reminder. What's number three? So number three is incantations. And if you've never heard this word or this term before, I'll give it a comparison to the word affirmation. I'm sure most of people have heard of an affirmation. It's essentially a statement of what you want to believe, how you want to feel. And so this is a great tool if you're not going to work with like a coach or a therapist for your subconscious. This is how you can actually on your own start to wire your own subconscious mind. It just takes a lot of repetition. That's how your mind learns. So repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. So the difference between an affirmation and an incantation is instead of saying, I am success or I am a millionaire, like what your conscious desire is, instead of just saying it, you are owning that statement. You are standing up, you are saying it like you already have it, that you know, feel, believe that you are that millionaire. So how you would say, I am a millionaire is different from an affirmation than like, I am a millionaire. <laughs> you have your hands going and your eyes are bug eyed open and you're shouting it and you're feeling it so that it's just a part of you. It's not only in your mind, it's your body, it's in your nervous system and just going over and over and over and over with it. So what I recommend people to do is take your phone and they all have voice recorders, click on play, even have a song in the background and just recite into it what your own incantations are, what you are, I am blank, I am blank, or I command, I demand, blank, blank, whatever it may be. And then play that and just have it memorized. And when you can, if you're in the shower, shout it out, in the car alone, shout it out. I mean, I did this in my backyard and I got a few weird stares, but <laughs> wherever you're comfortable to do it, this is really great, not priming only your mind, but your body, your nervous system. It is you. It is who you are. I agree. I've, I've tried it before. You, you really have to, um, you need to get in a routine with, I mean, one and two, I do those uh, religiously, but the three I sometimes forget about. Thank you for reminding me because I have tried them and it does change your state instantly if you do it correctly. If you do more of that affirmation and just kind of like, I'm strong and I'm wealthy, like it doesn't really get your energy or get your conscious or even your subconscious levels or your, your, your blood going, right? Yeah, but if correct. you shout it, if you, you know, invoke or involve a lot of different senses at once, you know, like you got music going, you're moving, you're doing all these things. It may sound hairy fairy, but I'm telling you it works. If it doesn't give you chills, something's wrong. I do think that it works. There's been a lot of very successful people that have talked about incantations. I know Napoleon Hill wrote a couple books and actually talked about affirmations and then incantations is just kind of another step above that. So again, I think that is an excellent way to, you know, change your state and more or less put yourself in the right mindset, which is what we're talking about today, because there's a lot of negative news out there and we want to not necessarily stick our head in the sand, but we don't want to make that our default program. You need to be informed, but don't let that change your behavior. Yeah. And just like Muhammad Ali, he always shouted, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. Like, look at all the athletes. Success leaves clues. And people with a success mindset, they do these things that the average person doesn't do. But that's why an average person stays average. And I know you and I know your listeners are not average people. No, we're not. That's why we are recording this now. And I'm actually doing my part to get great quality guests like yourself on the show so that we can shortcut the time it takes to get to success. Why do everything on your own when you can learn from others out there that are already doing it or ahead of you on the path of life? So the key to success in everything we do is 80% between our ears psychology, 20% mechanics. What do you think is the biggest mistake people make from a psychological standpoint? 
The biggest mistake is people equating their past and their present as a determiner for their future instead of realizing that your past doesn't define you, own your present, but your future is exactly what you want to make it by keeping your mindset primed to exactly how you want to feel, what you need to overcome, and who you're going to become in that process. So they're taking their current situation and extrapolating that forward, right? Yeah, or their past. They're like, well, this happened, and my parents this, and this happened. Okay, that, that happened. But if you're going to let that define you, you're not going to ever move forward. I see. And it's easy to get, get uh, sort of that tunnel vision, especially during times like now where, you know, things are a little bit unknown and you ex extrapolate that maybe even what happened yesterday in the news or what happens today as you're watching and extrapolate that going forward. And, and it just like your whole world seems to be closing in. And it's because you're thinking that today or yesterday, like the trend of that only gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And that's how you let your emotions and fear really can destroy you. So you have to be proactive. You have to not let your subconscious program steer you wrong. Sometimes you have to go in there and like you said, root that out, your limiting beliefs, that, that subconscious program, and put in a new program. So yeah. awesome stuff, Megan. For listeners who want to get help from you developing that success mindset, I know you've given some tips, but as in most things, like we know how to go work out, but if you really want success from a fitness standpoint, you hire a trainer. In this, in this case, we're talking about hiring a uh, success mindset coach, someone like yourself. So what's the best way we can reach you? Yes, absolutely. So the best way you can reach me, my website is levelup-everyday.com because what we do is level up your mind and level up every single day so you can truly free yourself, overcome anything, if it's procrastination, if it's a success or money block, or the mental health is where my heart lies as well, the anxiety and the stress, because on your way to the top, which all of you listeners are going to, if you're not going to enjoy it on the way, you're not going to enjoy it when you get there. So we really have to work through that. And follow me on Instagram as well. I post daily tips and tools, kind of like what I've shared today for you to do on your own and to start this mindset journey as well and this self-development at Megan Elise. And it's all one word. My name is spelled really weird. So hopefully that's in the show notes that you can find that. Absolutely. Great tips, great advice. And I will definitely put that in the show notes. And we're excited to now shift to rapid fire where we get to learn a little bit more about Megan Elise. So what do you do to keep your edge? So I make sure that I have an hour of either researching like podcasts, listening to or reading. I call it research because to me, it's like I love learning. I always make sure I do that in my day and I always have movement in my day. I love yoga and Pilates. So I keep my edge with fueling my mind and moving my body and always making that time for the meditations, incantations, everything I shared with you. I do that every single day and it, it's really changed my life. I went from being that anxious, stressed out, worry, just ball of mental health struggles for decades. And these things that I do in my day, it's like I wasn't living before. <laughs> <laughs> and to maintain that, that attitude in a time of unknown is amazing. So I commend you. The work that you do is, is paying off for you and your clients. Next question. So far, who has had the most impact on your life? This is so hard because I could say from my parents, because they've made me the person who I am today, I've had to heal from a not so great childhood, which I'm grateful for because it set me on this personal development, self growth path. But then my mentors and my teachers, Marissa Peer, who trained me in rapid transformational therapy, Tony Robbins, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, like these trailblazers, they all are saying the same thing, but in a different way. And they're 
like look where they are. It's just it's so inspiring. And I just I'm honored to learn from them and then to meld essentially everything they've taught me to other people as well. So if you could recommend, let's say one book, I know it's hard, but what would it be? Dr. Joe Dispenza. Which one? Becoming Supernatural. Oh, I love that one. I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> I actually saw something on YouTube this morning where he was saying what we were talking about today about meditation, visualization, and how just that alone can help you fight off viruses and diseases. So awesome book for those. Uh, we'll put that in the show note that have not heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza, I would encourage you to uh, read one of his books or all of them. I mean, great resources. So thank yeah. you for that. So what do you do in your free time when you're not moving, visualizing, meditating, helping clients and doing incantations? What else do you like to do? I am a social butterfly. I love to connect with people. So I spend a lot of time with friends, social outings. I love to be on the water. I am a sun chaser, the beach. I love to journal. I just enjoy, yeah, the human connection with other people. And when I have my alone time, it's just, yeah, journaling is something really fun I like to do. Do you typically do that journaling in the morning? I tend to do it at night, kind of before I go to bed. It's nice to empty your mind out before you try and go to sleep so that you can just slip into that deep, restful slumber right away with nothing on your mind. That's so true. So this show is uh, Profits to Wealth is about helping entrepreneurs become successful and then turn that success into wealth and turn that wealth into financial freedom. Financial freedom means different things to different people. What does it mean to you? Me, it means an overflow of abundance in my savings accounts, in my investing accounts, and just constant overflow, of never having to worry about anything, choices, and just feeling at peace. And financial independence or freedom does give you peace. I love that. So how does Megan Elise want to be remembered? That's a good question. It's a legacy question. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be remembered as someone who brought a lot of light and inspiration and education into the world to transform people's minds. That's powerful. Last thing, I am all about tips and tricks to shorten the time it takes to find true success. So what is one parting tip or advice you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, shared a lot. Yeah. <laughs> your focus, your focus is so important. Focus on yourself, focus on you instead of what other people may say and other people's opinions or judgments, because the true answers are always within you. You know what's best for you. And too many people look externally for the answers that are internally. That's so true. Maybe they need to meditate a little bit more and get the answer. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Megan. Great, great wisdom, advice, and tips that are extremely helpful, not only just every day, but especially in times of turmoil and uncertainty. So thank you. Thank you very much for your time and the value that you've given our community. My absolute pleasure. I hope this has helped people and that you take action. Do one of those three things. Do three of them if you can commit to that and just feel how truly your life will transform and just take you to your ultimate destiny that much quicker. I agree. Thanks again, Megan. Take care. Thank you. You too. That's all for this episode of Profits to Wealth. But we have more resources available to you on our website. Head over to ProfitsToWealth.com and take our questionnaire to find out how we can provide you with a tailored approach to your entrepreneurial journey. It's available exclusively on ProfitsToWealth.com. Until next time, we look forward to talking business, money, and freedom right here on Profits.